Ah. Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick video about the book of Boba Fett and the problems that I have with it. But first, an explanation for why I haven't been making videos. So if you uh, want to skip that, uh, just click on this timestamp here and it'll take you to where I start rambling about Boba Fett. Anyway, yeah, so I started the year, I had a schedule, I was going to take a week off and I was going to put a video out, which is what I did. And I was going to put another video out and I didn't. And I was going to put another video out and I didn't put that one out either. The reason for that was... I kind of ran out of time and then just when I was going to start working on a video, my laptop decided that it was going to break. I didn't have another computer to make videos, so uh, I had to order a PC. So I ordered the PC. When <laughs> when the, v the PC was built, brought it home, set it all up, the monitor on that broke. So I had to waste another day, another few days, taking that back to get another monitor. So I came back, I set that all up, and I set it up wrong. So that wasted a whole afternoon because I didn't have any monitor to work on the brand new PC that I'd made so that I could make a video. So basically, yeah, I've wasted two weeks with computer issues. But after this video is coming out, there should be a normal video on Thursday, depending if I have time and if uh, people who own the copyright are assholes or not. So uh, yeah, Bob Fett, let's talk about that. I have three main problems with this show, which I will split up into three different sections in the bottom. They are mainly, number one, what the show is, number two, the writing and the structure of the story, and number three, Boba Fett himself. So to begin with, what the show is, it is a prequel and a sequel to The Mandalorian. Now sequels and prequels have problems that are generally always there with a prequel and a sequel and the Book of Boba Fett sadly is no different in that it has those problems. The, the problems it has with the prequel is it's telling a story that we already kind of know the end to. So what you end up doing is just filling in gaps that are generally kind of inconsequential and not all that interesting. Or tell us information that we don't really need or want to know. So your story ends up going nowhere really. Which is a big problem with this because we're four episodes in and not a lot really has happened. I mean we learn how Boba Fett got out of the Sarlacc stomach. Which, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Does that mean going around Facebook saying oh, this was predicted ten years ago? How else are you going to get out of a Sarlacc stomach? Of course he was going to burn off his way out. I mean, it was pretty obvious, right? So, <laughs> you have those problems with it being a prequel. And it's also a sequel. And the problem there is that we already just got this kind of story with The Mandalorian. Except it was just way better. So, The Mandalorian story was a redemption arc of a badass bounty hunter dressed in Mandalorian armor and the book of Boba Fett is the story of a formerly badass bounty hunter on a redemption arc who is also kind of a crime boss but he doesn't commit any crime and nobody seems to respect him so yeah and he's a legacy character now, people's characters change over time, for sure. But, when it comes to fictional characters, especially legacy ones in a huge franchise like Star Wars, people have a definitive idea of what they like to see in those characters. And they, they don't want the character to change too much, right? People do not like change in these kinds of shows. People already got real angry about them changing Luke Skywalker's character. And yeah, I, I, I can fully get behind that, especially in this case, because the way they've changed it is pretty awful. But we'll get to that in the final part of this video, because let's move on to the writing and the structure. Now, the writing and the structure here is 
it's well it is bad it's just bad right because the the first two episodes kind of set up the main emotional core of the narrative which is Boba Fett finding the family acceptance and love that he's never had in his life because of course Jango Fett his father had his head cut off by Samuel L. Jackson in the prequels and he is in fact a clone so he doesn't have a mother so he's never had a family he's never had love he's never had acceptance he's just been a gun for hire his entire life and the Tuscan Raiders give him something to belong to and I thought, all right, this is pretty good. I enjoyed the first two episodes. It started going bad in episode three, where the death of the Tuscan Raiders is basically a throwaway scene, right? The scene where they are all killed off should have been the last scene of an episode so that the audience could ruminate on that, could, could get some grips with what they just saw but instead it's, it's like a third of the way through the episode halfway through the episode or whatever we see them all dead he says goodbye he makes like a funeral pyre and then we get an action scene so it's, it's like you, you don't get any any space to think about what you've just seen right it should be the biggest um, thing in that episode is the Tuscan Raiders dying because they were being they had been set up in the first two episodes as the main emotional core of the story. So then you know, that's wasted. The main the present day scenes are kinda boring. It's just Boba Fett going from meeting to meeting and getting other people to fight for him. Uh, and you've wasted the prequel bits because you've just shown us a bunch of stuff that we didn't really need to see and the stuff that we did really need to see you've wasted in the present day yeah, because you just left, you, you wasted it as a throwaway scene. So the writing and the structure of the story is not very good and especially when it comes to Boba Fett himself. Right, he is the biggest problem here. Because Boba Fett in the original stories was just a badass who stood in the background. I think he had like three lines maybe. He was on screen for probably less than 10 minutes. He didn't really have much to do. But he was a bounty hunter and he looked cool as fuck. Right? And he was an even better kind of action toy. And that's why people love Boba Fett. And it turns out when you give Boba Fett a character, uh, he's a tired old man who doesn't do any of the cool shit that he did 30, 40 years ago. Or however old Star Wars is now. Right? He's just an old, tired man who is over everybody's shit. He just wants to go down and take a nap in his back to town. And leave everything to his minions, you know, in the episode three, he had a chance to go chase the um, mayor's assistant via his rocket pack. He could have fired rockets out of his arms. It'd look cool. But instead, he sends the Vespa modders. And I'm sat there thinking, why, why don't he just use his jetpack and chase after him? That'd be cool. But no. Apparently, no. He's just over shit. He just wants to just go and take a frigging nap in his back to town. And so he sends the modders, they catch up, then what, what happens? Oh, here's Boba Fett flying in with his jetpack. Also, the writers knew he had one, because the episode before that, people surround him with shields, and he's, like, getting hit with electro buttons. And I'm thinking to myself, why does he just fly up? He's got a jetpack. I can quite clearly see that he's wearing a jetpack on his back. Uh, so he's just, like, a tired old man. And the, this is Disney, so you get a lot of member berries. You know, we've had the Rancor, we've had the Space Jazz Band. We're on Tatooine, we've got Jabba's Palace. And then things that are cool. And it doesn't really matter if the things that are cool make any sense. So we've got the Vespa Mod Gang. 
Now, I have no problem with those people existing in the Star Wars universe, but they'd, they'd probably exist on somewhere like Coruscant or that casino planet we went to in one of the movies. They'd, they'd exist on that, but on Tatooine? No, but there's no way that somebody that incongruous, we would not have seen them in the background. I mean, we've been on Tatooine loads of times, probably the most of any planet in the Star Wars universe. We've never had any inkling that anything like this, any sort of subculture like this, exists on Tatooine. I, I just don't buy that they would exist on Tatooine at all. And I think they just exist because some producer, some writer, some idiot executive at Disney thought, well, they're cool, just throw them in. Who cares? Who cares if they would exist uh, on Tatooine? Or it makes any sense within this story. They just throw the... Vesper mod is in. Everybody in this show is like 70 years old, you know? So we, we need some young, beautiful people. Just just throw them in there. A bit of colour. Uh, and it, it's just indicative of this entire show. I don't think it's been very well thought out. The writing's bad. You know, as, as I said, all the problems of the sequel and prequel. Well, that being said, it, it's not the worst Star Wars I've ever seen. But could have been so much better. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the book of Boba Fett. Next week I will be back with a normal video now that I have sorted my PC issues and every Thursday or Friday after that I will be making videos. So uh, like, comment and subscribe I guess. <laughs>